Okay, good morning. Uh, welcome to today's 45 minute yoga class. Uh, the focus on today's class, I thought we would keep it more of a yin inspired class. Uh, so we'll be holding postures a little bit longer, anywhere between two to, two to three minutes. Um, the class will be a lot slower paced. Uh, we'll have a much more luxurious Shavasana and an optional meditation at the end. Uh, with that being said, you don't need any equipment for today's class. You just need yourself. Uh, and if you have a yoga mat, that's great. If not, just a comfortable surface beneath you that you can practice on. Uh, just take a quick look around you. Make sure that you don't have any hazards that you could trip over or bump into while you're practicing class. Uh, and before we get started, always remember uh, that during class uh, to take breaks, go at your own pace. Uh, if at any point you experience any faintness, dizziness, uh, or shortness of breath, you know your body best. Uh, so please, please stop exercising. Uh, we're going to get started. Uh, I'm going to make my way to my mat. And we're going to start in a position that is uh, and we'll actually start off with butterfly legs. So we'll allow the soles of the feet to touch here. Knees kind of fall open to either side of the room. You can get the lower limbs into the position once you've made your way uh, into a laying down position with the upper body. But if you want, you can also put the legs into the position before you lay down. So soles of the feet to touch, knees kind of open up to either side of the room. You can mimic the arms in the same position that the legs are in, and you can kind of bend the elbows, let the elbows reach to either side of the room, and then interlace the fingertips and then just kind of place them along the back of the head, almost as if you're relaxing on a towel in the beach on a nice summer day. And this is really nice because it allows the full expansion of the lungs to be accessible here, so you kind of really have that really deep diaphragmatic breath where you can breathe in all the way to the base of the lungs, fill them up to their maximum capacity. And then as you exhale, you can kind of soften, let the lungs empty. Kind of breathe into that space, feel the expansion of the lungs and kind of use them to your advantage here to make the breaths a little bit more active. So breathing into the lungs through the nose. And then almost as if you can't breathe in anymore, take a final little breath of air and then exhale it all out through the nose. A couple more rounds, just exaggerating the breath here, filling the lungs to their maximum capacity, feeling the rib cage expand. And then notice how everything softens on the exhale. Another full cycle of breath here. Kind of just slowly getting the breath prepared for the rest of class. And then as you exhale, you can slowly bring the arms to either side of the body, bring the knees in towards the center and the soles of the feet to touch on the floor. I'm just going to come into a quick little happy baby or a little well-deserved hug, just drawing the limbs in towards the chest and kind of rock from side to side here. And you can rock forward and back, just massaging that spine, your choice. And then when you're ready, if you'd like, you're more than welcome to kind of roll yourself up into a seated position. Or if that's too uncomfortable for the spine, you can kind of just roll over to one side and then press yourself up. We're going to slowly make our way into a tabletop position. We're going to bring the knees nice and wide here. So wide enough so that they touch the edges of your mat or wide enough so that you can drape the torso in between the thighs. Slowly push the hips back towards the heels and then allow the forehead to rest on the mat. Arms are nice and long out in front of you, fingertips reaching the wall out in front of you. Feel the lengthening across the arms, into the shoulders, maybe even all the way down along the sides of the torso here. Take a full cycle of breath. We're gonna be slowly moving over to the right. As you exhale, feeling the stretch along the left side body. 
You can even bend the right elbow and really lengthen out to the left arm, left fingertips. Feel the stretch along the left side body. And notice where the shoulders are in space, kind of level them out so that they feel like they're in line with one another. Take another full cycle of breath here, just slowly bringing movement to the sides of the torso and the spine. And then as you exhale, slowly walk the hands over to the left side. So lengthening out really with the right arm, right fingertips all the way so that you feel the stretch maybe down to the right corner of the hip. And you can bend to the left elbow this time and really allow that right arm, right fingertips to stretch forward. Shoulders are in line here for one more breath. And then as you exhale, slowly walk the hands through center and then bring yourself back into that tabletop position. We'll do a couple rounds of cat cow here, just moving up the spine. So you can keep the back of the toes curled. Inhale, draw the navel down. Tailbone reaches up and maybe you look forward. Pressing through the palms here, fingertips spread nice and wide, full inhale. And then as you exhale, draw the chin to the chest. Begin to arc the spine like a rainbow up towards the sky. Pelvis draws forward, tailbone tucks in. Really feel the shoulder blades expand here as you press the palms down. One more breath. And slowly as you exhale, uncurl, unwind, coming back into that cow pose. Maybe looking straight ahead or slightly up. Full inhale here for the last round. As you exhale, begin to curl the spine again like a rainbow up towards the sky. Really press into the hands here. Back of the toes are curled for full inhale. As you exhale, slowly lift the knees and find downward facing dog. So feel free to pedal up the feet here. Shake the head yes, shake the head no. Just see how the lower limbs feel for one more breath. Full inhale here, slowly draw that right foot. Allow it to float forward in between both palms and then descend the left knee, so kind of to a low lunge. From here, you're going to inhale, lift both arms up to the sky. Exhale, hands to heart center, thumb press up against the chest. So really shine the heart forward here. Chest is nice and open. If there's any sensitivity to the low knee, sorry, to the knee that's resting on the earth, you can kind of um, fold your mat up to create an extra cushion for the knee. You can kind of bring a blanket there, your choice. We're going to slowly be coming in to a deeper lunge, you can kind of begin to hip, hinge the hips forward. So you'll feel the stretch on the left corner of the hip here. And then you can keep the hands resting on the right thigh, or you can slowly bring the arms down to rest the palms onto your mat. So we're gonna come into lizard pose here. So you can keep the arms here nice and extended, palms rooting down and kind of focus on the sensations on the corners of the hips here and the pelvis. If you want more depth, you can kind of come on to the forearms. Just see how that feels, bringing the torso lower to the ground. While you bring the arms lower to the ground, you might feel it way more on the right corner of the hip. And that hip will like to open up. So kind of zip it up and drop back in towards the midline, in towards the torso so that the right inner thigh is resting on the right side of the torso. Hold here for a couple more breaths, really getting into those hips here to so move slowly, methodically. One more breath. As you exhale, you're gonna slowly bring the palms up to rest onto the mat if they're not already there. Curl the back of the toes and then slowly step the right foot back, come into table. And take a full inhale, bring the knees nice and wide and then slowly come into child's pose. Just shake up the hips here for a full cycle of breath. Full inhale in child's pose. And then as you exhale, slowly come through table and then curl the back of the toes, find downward facing dog. Beautiful. So just as slow as we went into that posture on the right side, we're going to do the exact same thing on the left. So take a full inhale here. 
As you exhale, the left foot is going to float in between both palms, this time sending the right knee. So coming into that low lunge. Adjust your foundations as needed. So sometimes it feels comfortable to move that foot in front of you out to the outer edge of your mat. So moving your foot into a wider stance to kind of allow for the torso to drape along the midline. So kind of play around with that first, see how that feels. The back toes on that right leg can be either resting flat against the mat, or the toes may be curled, your choice. And then kind of breathe into it, see if you're going for more depth today or not, by bringing the forearms down. That left knee likes to open up, really draw it and zip it back into the midline towards the left side of the torso. Almost as if inner left thigh and outer left torso were touching. A couple more breaths here, really breathing into the space, the sensations that come up and see if you can back off or breathe into it. One more breath. And then just as slow as you went in, you're going to slowly peel yourself up if your forearms are resting on the earth. Step the knee back, come into child's pose. We're going to release it out again, coming into that child's pose position. So push the hips back, forehead rests onto the mat. Let the arms soften down here. I'm going to be here for three breaths. So kind of notice how the back of the rib cage moves. How the breath kind of softens when it's not put in a position that it's not normally in. So notice how that breath softens, body relaxes. One more breath. At your own pace, you're going to slowly peel yourself forward through table. Take a deep inhale. And as you exhale, lift through the knees, downward facing dog. Awesome. Feel free to pedal out the feet here again if you'd like for one cycle of breath. Full inhale. As you exhale, right leg is going to reach up towards the sky. You're going to point your toes. Bend that right knee and allow the right heel to reach over to the left side. So you're opening up that right corner of the hip here. If wild thing is in your practice, you can go ahead and allow the right foot to rest down. Open up through the front side body by a wild thing. If not, you can simply allow that right hip to kind of create circular rotations going one way and then the other. And one more cycle of breath here. And then slowly draw that right knee in towards the torso as if forehead and knee were to touch, hold there. Full inhale. As you exhale, float that right foot in between both palms in front of you. Coming into a high lunge here on the back of the toes of the left foot. Inhale, up, rise up. Slowly bring the hands to the hips, root both heels down, find one or one uh, through the lower limbs. And then inhale up, cactus arms. Hold here, shine the heart forward, full cycle of breath. As you exhale, begin to release that right thigh, lengthen through the right leg. Bring the hands behind the back body, interlace the fingertips, root the fists down, take a full cycle of breath. As you exhale, begin to hinge over that right thigh, almost as if forehead and knee were to touch, and then the palms reach up to the sky. So you'll feel this in the shoulders, so you're welcome to keep the palms resting on the low back, and over time, kind of lifting them up. You can bend that right knee as much as you need to to allow forehead and knee to touch. And then over time, lengthening, <clears throat> excuse me, that right thigh. Holding here for one more cycle of breath, full inhale. As you exhale, release the palms down to frame that right foot. So you're going to step the right foot back into a plank position. Hold here in plank, full inhale. As you exhale, descend your way. Knee in downward facing dog. In downward facing dog, take a full cycle of breath. We're going to do the same thing on the left side. So when you're ready, inhale, lift left leg up to the sky. Bend that left knee and then left heel reaches over to the right side. So again, you can find wild thing or kind of go 
through those hip movements, one way and then the other for two more breaths. And then full inhale when you're ready, left knee comes in towards the center as if forehead and knee are at the top. Hold here for a full cycle of breath. And then as you exhale, float that left foot forward in between the palms. Coming up to that high runner's lunge here, inhale up. Root through the heels, find warrior arm, warrior one through the limbs, and then open up cactus arms. Shine the heart forward here. Maybe find depth in that left thigh. Rooting down through both heels, both edges, sorry, all four corners of both feet. And then as you exhale, begin to release the palms here. You can bring the hands to the hips, so you can interlace. The hands behind the low back again. Release to that left thigh and then drape the torso over that left thigh. So lots of hand options here. Maybe one side feels a little different than the other. So you're welcome to bring the hands down. Frame the left foot with both hands. You can bring the hands to the shin and kind of Use that as a tool to bring the torso closer to the knee, or sorry, the thigh. <clears throat> you can keep the hands interlaced behind the low back if that works for you. Lots of options for the arms. Kind of find the one that works for you. Hold there for one more breath. As you exhale, begin to lift. Sorry, begin to bring the palms to frame the left foot, step the left foot back into plank. Hold here, full inhale, exhale, descend your way. Cycling through your vinyasa and then meeting in downward facing dog. In downward facing dog, take a full cycle of breath. Full inhale through the nose, full exhale. Find your next breath. You're gonna look forward in between the palms and then walk both feet forward in between the hands. Inhale, belly rises halfway up. Exhale, fold, release that low back, let the head hang heavy here in your forward fold. And then slowly inhale all the way up, head coming up last, arms come up, maybe you look up, and then exhale, hands to either side. Awesome, we're gonna come into chair pose here. So we're going to bring a nice distance in between both feet, about hip distance. You can kind of bring two fists together if you're not sure what hip distance feels like. And with both fists kind of touching, come down and bring that in between both feet and then use that kind of like as a marker or a meter to use to bring the feet apart. You can bring them wider than hip distance if that feels good, your choice. I like to bring the hands to the hips and kind of pretend like I'm imagining that I'm sitting back into that chair. And then as the hips tilt back into that imaginary chair, you'll notice that the navel naturally draws in and brings a natural engagement to the abdomen. So actively focus on that as you descend through the thighs here. Take a full cycle of breath. And when you're ready, you can float the arms parallel to the earth or you can bring the arms up slightly higher, palms facing each other or palms face down. Find depth here in the next couple cycles of breath. Maybe you bend through the knees here a little bit more. Really shine the heart forward, one more breath. As you exhale, you're gonna bring the hands to heart center. Release the thighs, fold forward. Take a full inhale, exhale here. We're gonna do another dynamic rising all the way up. Arms come up, maybe you look up. Exhale, hands to either side. So we're gonna cycle through that chair and forward fold pose three more times. <coughs> kind of finding more depth, more range of motion as you become more comfortable with the posture because you know what comes next. So when you're ready coming into that chair pose again, Bending through the knees, navel drawn in, either arms parallel to the earth, or over time, slowly bringing the arms up. Start turning forward here, full cycle of breath. 
As you exhale, hands come to heart center. You hinge through the hips, release the thighs, forward fold. You can grab on to opposite elbows here, head hangs heavy. And then on your next cycle of breath, inhale all the way up to standing. Arms come up. Exhale, hands to either side. Awesome. Two more coming right into chair pose. Inhale, arms parallel. Hold here for a cycle of breath. As you exhale, hands to heart center, thumbs against the chest. Find that forward fold, head hangs heavy. Inhale all the way up, arms come up. Exhale, hands to either side. Final one, let's be extra juicy here. Bending through the knees, finding as much depth, heart shines forward. Full cycle of breath. Exhale, hands come to the inside of the chest as you exhale, release the thighs, fold forward. We're going to inhale, hands to the shins, belly rises halfway up. Exhale, fold, plant the palms, walk both feet back into play. Full inhale here in plank. As you exhale, descend your way. Meeting in downward facing dog. And downward facing dog, take a full cycle of breath here. Full inhale, exhale through the nose. On your next breath, you're going to inhale, look forward in between the palms and lift with the right foot. Right knee comes towards the right wrist. So we're coming into pigeon pose here. So finding the depth again that works best for you. So that left leg behind you is out nice and long. Tops of the feet rooted onto the floor or your mat. If you want to find more depth again, you can come onto the forearms, maybe hands on top of each other, forehead resting on the hands. And kind of just hold there for a few breaths. Never so subtly, just notice where the corners or the hips are in space. Just do a quick little body scan, see how they feel. And ever so slightly, imagine as if the right knee, so the right leg that's bent right now, imagine that that right knee was reaching towards the back wall behind you. There's a subtle shift in the hips where that right hip kind of reaches back, that right femur bone kind of sinks into that right socket a bit more. And it can be a very subtle movement where not a lot of physical movement actually happens, but by just energetically drawing that right knee towards the back wall, you're kind of bringing your hips into more of an alignment with each other. So just kind of hold here, one more breath. As you exhale at the forearms, we're down onto the earth. You're going to slowly peel them off, root the palms down, curl the back of the left toe, step that right foot back into play. So optional flow here if you want to kind of shake it all out, or you can always skip the vinyasa flow and go right into downward facing dog from here. So in downward facing dog, we're going to do pigeon pose on the left side again. So full cycle of breath. As you exhale, left foot will come forward in between, sorry, left knee will come forward towards the left wrist. And then again, right leg behind you nice and long, toes may be curled or tops of the feet may be flat on the mat. And then again, your choice, coming onto the forearms, maybe the head rests down, forehead resting on the hands. Finding that depth in the hips that works for you that you can kind of hold the composure there and breathe through it for a couple of rounds. Another couple of cycles of breath here, maybe drawing that left knee back towards the back wall behind you, creating that subtle uh, energetic movement. One more breath here. And then ever so slowly, you're going to peel yourself up, palms root down, coming off the forearms, and then stepping that left leg back into plank, cycling through that optional flow, 
or skipping it and going into downward facing dog. Going into downward facing dog right away. Or if you're getting there now, maybe feel free to pedal out the feet, shake out any tingly sensations that might be going on through the lower limbs. And then when you're ready, bring your knees down, coming back into that posture we've done a few times today, child's pose. So hips rest back towards the heels, forehead rests on the mat. And you're kind of just here, breathing into the space. Lungs soften with every exhale. Maybe the hips soften with every exhale. You do a couple more rounds of breath here. Maybe sighing it out on your last couple exhales, so opening the mouth and kind of letting it all go. One more breath. And then as slow as you went into it, you're going to slowly peel yourself up. Rest yourself on one side of the hips and then slowly bring both legs forward. Give yourself a nice little shake here. Shake the head. Yeah, or sorry, give the legs a little shake. And then we're going to come back into those butterfly legs. So I'm going to turn around to face you so you can kind of see what's going on. So we're going to bring the soles of the feet to touch here again. The knees kind of open up to either side of the room. We're going to do a couple of movements with the upper body and keeping the lower limbs as is. So we're going to first curl coming into a little tiny imaginable ball ball. So coming into a little stretch for the spine and the lower back. So you bring the hands to rest onto the shins here or kind of on the outsides of the tops of the feet and maybe even opening up the feet as if it were a book, your choice. Root down through the hips here, shine the heart forward, belly drawn in, full inhale. As you exhale, you're gonna to begin to curl the spine like a tiny little ball, almost as if the top of the head was going to rest on the inside of the soles of the feet here. So you'll feel this along the spine. The hips might, or sorry, the knees might like to lift up, so actively draw them down. So there's a lot going on here with the spine and the hips. The breath may even become slightly compressed here as the chin tucks into the chest. That's okay, just kind of breathe through it here. You won't be here for too long. One more breath. And then as you exhale, you're gonna uncurl, unwind, chin coming up last. Perfect. So we're gonna slowly bring movement into the torso and the side body here now that we've stretched out the neck and kind of uh, releasing the muscle along the low back. So from here, we're going to come into a gentle twist. We're going to inhale, lift both arms up. As you exhale, twisting over to the right, left hand will come to the right knee. Right arm comes behind you to support the spine, palm rooting down. Draw the belly in, full inhale. As you exhale, find a gentle twist over to the right. Hold there. Maybe you look past your right shoulder here on your last breath. Full inhale. And then as you exhale, you're going to unhinge, unwind, come back through center. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, twisting over to the left this time, right hand on right knee, left hand behind you, left palm rooting behind you, maybe to support the spine. And belly drawn in as you inhale. And as you exhale, looking past that left shoulder, maybe holding there. And then as your exhale, slowly come through center, unhinge, unwind. You're going to bring the knees in towards the middle. Bring the feet a nice distance apart, rooting down through the feet. We're going to windshield wiper the legs here. We did a lot of work on the hips. We're going to bring the hands out behind us. 
So the fingertips can face your glutes or the fingertips may face outwards. Whatever feels better for the shoulders and the arms here. Really lengthen out through the body. So the upper body is nice and long. Heart slightly shining up towards the sky. Feet rooted here, a nice distance apart. Full inhale. As you exhale, knees will fall over to the right. So hold here. Maybe your gaze looks over to the left. Full cycle of breath. As you exhale, come through center and then over to the left side. So maybe this time we're looking over to the right. Really rooting down the palms here so the heart's still shining forward. Another cycle of breath. As you exhale, come through center and then over to the right. So this time you don't have to fold and kind of move at your own pace and rock the knees from one side and then over to the other. Do a couple more rounds here for three, for two, and then for one, meaning back in the center. Awesome, we're gonna bring in some core strength before we make our way down to a laying down position. So keeping the knees still a nice distance apart, we're going to come into boat pose. So I like to always kind of rest the torso in between the thighs, give it a quick little freestyle moment, let it hang out here for a bit before we engage and strengthen it in a little moment. So we're going to just kind of soften here. Head hangs heavy. Back of the neck nice and long. And then from here, I always like to bring my hands to the front of the shins, kind of begin to sharp, shine the heart forward and hinge back through the hips. So the belly button is drawn in here, heart shining forward. So there's a full integration along the front side body. Spine nice and long here with the heart shining forward and then slowly begin to lift one leg. So one leg coming to a 90 degree angle and maybe the right or the other leg to meet to the left. And keep the hands under the under, under the back of the thighs here or you can float the arms up parallel to the earth, palms face each other. Coming into boat pose here, holding here for 10, belly drawn in for nine, heart shining forward for eight, breathing in and out through the nose for seven, six, maybe you lengthen the legs for five, maybe you reach the toes up for four, Fingertips reach forward for three. Belly drawn in for two. Heart shining forward for one. And then slowly feet come down. Bring the spine down towards the earth. Give yourself a well-deserved hug. Rock from side to side. <coughs> Excuse me. When you're ready, you're going to slowly just bring both legs up to the sky, coming into a very passive inversion. So pointing and flexing the feet here. I'm going to do one more core exercise before we go into the final stretching posture for the lower limbs. And then getting into Shavasana. So from here with both feet lifting up towards the sky. You're going to slowly bring the right thigh in towards the chest. Left leg is going to reach down. So you can keep that left leg nice and long towards the earth, or if that creates too much sensation for the hamstrings or the hips, you're welcome to keep the knee bent. But options for the left leg there that's reaching down towards the earth. The right leg is going to reach up towards the sky, so you can bring the hands behind the hamstring or the upper thigh here, really lengthen out through the leg, flex that right foot here, full inhale. If it's available to you as you exhale, you can walk the hands further up along the leg. Maybe peace fingers touch the big toe, your choice. So your choice to keep both arms here, or if not, using the right hand to hold the right leg up, left arm reaches down. So the left arm can come into a T-shaped position or alongside the body for balance, your choice. 
kind of stretching out the left, or sorry, the right hamstring here. Breathing here for a couple breaths. One more breath. Slowly release that right leg, wherever your hand's holding on to. Keep it up towards the sky, the left leg is going to come up to meet the right. You're going to hold on to that left leg wherever it feels comfortable, and right leg is going to come down. So you can keep the right leg nice and long towards the earth. You can even flex that right foot, keep a nice active right thigh. And then when you're ready, walking the hands up along that left leg, maybe grabbing the peace fingers and lengthening that left leg as much as you can. So don't really hyper extend through the knee and then you feel all the sensation on the back of the hamstring that might actually not be as beneficial for you if you're forcing yourself into it. So rather ease into it, maybe lower the hands and over time lengthen through that knee. Kind of acknowledge that one leg may feel different than the other, and that's okay. And I'm just breathing into that space here. One more breath. And then when you're ready, right leg will come up to meet the left. Final core exercise before we get into Shavasana. So arms will come to either side of the body. Full inhale here, and then as you exhale, slowly bring the legs down, about halfway down. Legs are zipped together here through the midline. Hold here for five, four, three, two, one. And then slowly lower the legs even more, almost as if they're about to touch the earth. Hold here for five. Four, three, two, one, and then let the limbs fall down towards the earth. Finding your way into Shavasana, letting your body soften, let the arms and legs soften, coming into that conscious stillness again. Letting the eyes close, maybe for the first time. And taking a nice long deep inhale and exhale. Staying here in stillness. I'm going to take a quick look at the camera. Kind of just letting all the muscles melt and gravity pull it all in towards the earth. Letting your breath slowly return to its natural rhythm. Almost as if the muscles were beginning to melt off of the bone structure. Using your way into more comfort with every exhale. You're more than welcome to stay exactly as you are in the position laying down in Shavasana. If you'd like to join in for a meditation before we go off into the rest of our day, you're welcome to join in as well. Completely optional. Just rolling over onto your right side if you're choosing to opt in. And just resting there for a few moments, keeping the eyes still soft. And then when you're ready, slowly pressing yourself up back into that seated position. So again, completely optional either staying in Shavasana or joining in. And letting the hips kind of soften, plugging into the earth, hands resting. 
on either side of the body. You can let the palms face down towards the earth or up towards the sky, completely your choice. And with the eyes closed here, just kind of tune in. Notice how your breath moves. Kind of acknowledge that this little vessel of our body is the only thing we really have control of. So any outside noise, anything that is happening after you're done class can all kind of wait. Just acknowledge and accept that you've set this time aside for you and just notice your inhales and your exhales to the nose. And every time that mind kind of jumps from one thought to the other, like a monkey going from one branch to the next, kind of drawing that monkey mind back and training it with the breath. Knowing that you can access this on or off your mat at any point throughout the day. And only when you're ready, you can slowly open up the eyes. Thank you so much for joining. Remember that Tuesday classes run at 3.30 and Fridays at 11. Both classes are 45 minutes long. If you have any questions or comments, I'll stick around for a little bit um, and see if you have any questions. If not, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Uh, stay hydrated and stay.